Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold, and I have the privilege of working with ASAP Ministries. That stands for Advocates for Southeast Asians and the Persecuted. Here's a story of one of those special Southeast Asians that I've had the privilege to know. Little Jimmy was only three months old. His mother held him close. He was so skinny. She wished she knew what to do to make him stop throwing up and having diarrhea. All the relatives just stood around him like they were waiting for him to take his last breath. Jimmy's father took action. He was chief of that little Karin village in Myanmar known as Burma. But he was more than a chief. He was a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. He called the elders of the church together to anoint little Jimmy and prayed, God of heaven and earth, if you heal my little boy, he will belong to you. I will raise him to serve you. Little Jimmy got well. As a boy, he knew God had a plan for his life, but he was also surrounded by war. The Karen tribe wanted to rule themselves, or at least have a much greater say in the Burmese government. There was constant fighting somewhere in the jungles all the time. One day, as Jimmy was in school, he looked out a window and saw a handsome Karen soldier. He looked so sharp, the way he dressed, the way he walked and talked. I want to be just like him, said little Jimmy. Another day, he saw the government soldiers traipse through the village. They took whatever they wanted, chickens, pigs, killed them on the spot, cooked and ate. And then they threw away anything that was left on the ground. It made Jimmy upset. Worse still was when he saw a Korean man forced to carry heavy ammunition. It was so heavy, he stumbled and fell to the ground. The government soldier took his gun and beat the man, yelling at him to stand up and carry it forward. Jimmy couldn't get that picture out of his mind. It burned in his heart. When he grew up, he would be a soldier and make things right. But his father had other plans for him. And so did his teachers. They would say, God needs you as his soldier. There aren't many Korean pastors that can lead well. Jimmy, when you grow up, be God's man. He would shake his head, at least inside himself, saying, no way. But a big change came. And suddenly his father and then his whole family had to flee the fighting just to stay alive. So they went near the border of Thailand where Jimmy studied at Helen Hall's Seventh-day Adventist School. He learned English really well. And at his father's urging, he was sent off to Spicer in India to study theology. I'm praying for you, son. When Jimmy came back, he immediately began working with a political organization, not with the church. The Thailand Adventist Mission President came to visit. We need you, Jimmy, he said. Then Pastor Palma called from the northern border. Jimmy, can you come? We need your help. No, 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 that's not what I want to do. But he couldn't sleep at night. Over and over, the thoughts raced in his mind. My father is a pastor and a good chief. My grandfather was the first convert in Labotok village because he saw that good medical and educational work of Eric B. Hare, and he wanted his village to have the same. He was a good chief and a good Christian. Maybe I should serve the Lord. He began helping the church in a children's orphanage in Dak province. And soon he started a church in Timu village. Then he was off to Bangkok where he raised up the Burmese Korean church in 2000. In his spare time, he'd go up to the border again and again and train laymen. Three more churches sprang up as he began to work, even though he still sometimes struggled with his call from God. The Mission Health Food Factory back in Bangkok needed some more workers. And a young Buddhist lady applied and was accepted. She began to attend the daily worships, enjoying the stories that she had never heard before. The manager, Mr. Prejak, was so kind and helpful. The love of God became real to her as she saw it lived in him. And she was baptized and caught the attention of Jimmy. Before long, they were married and not too much time passed before they had two handsome sons. So it looked like Pastor Jimmy would just keep planting churches among his people in Thailand and Burma and on and on. In fact, I met him there. We were living just north of him at Ayutthaya, trying to plant a church ourselves among the Thai Buddhists. It was so hard, and he seemed so good at it. Then suddenly I heard that he had immigrated to America. Why did he do that? I was frustrated. America's lots of Christians. We need him out here. But God knew better than me. You see, between 2005 and 2013, about 80,000 refugees would be resettled from the border camp to other countries, mainly the United States. Hundreds of them had become Seventh-day Adventists in the border camps and, and also in the country. 
but they would need somebody to find them, encourage them, and help them organize in the new countries of resettlement. Jimmy didn't know that that would be him. He had a chance, in fact, to go to Australia to live near his parents where they had immigrated. He wanted to, he really wanted to, but something held him back. And then his three brothers and a sister who were already in America said to him, come on, we need you here. The people are like sheep scattered around the country without a shepherd. But he didn't want to go. Once again, God had to move on Jimmy's heart. I've been like a Jonah, he told me. God's been gracious. So he went. He brought his wife and two boys to live in North Carolina near his siblings. Seven Korean families met together each Sabbath to worship God. They had no church, so they met in each other's homes, a different one every week. An English-speaking church member saw this happening, and so he took Jimmy to the conference office and then to a church. But people were busy. He was just another foreigner in America. They didn't know his story. They didn't know God's great call in his life. And they had plenty of their own things to deal with. But people were praying, and God had his plan. Pastor Somchai, a leader from Thailand, came visiting. He found Jimmy. Let's go to the conference office again. Let's help them see how God is sending people from around the world to America and how important it is for the church members here to partner. Jimmy shared his strategy, his desire to see Korean congregations organized around the country. The conference president's heart was visibly touched. Soon the local church had opened the door for this growing group to meet in their church on Sabbath afternoons. Back at the ASAP Ministries office, Judy, Julia, and others were praying for Jimmy and the many Korean refugees too. They were all struggling to make a living, to just survive. Yes, life was wonderful in America, so many freedoms and possibilities, but life was also very hard. They had to learn English and it was tough. The few jobs they could find often had bosses demanding that they work on Sabbath. Their children, well, they were quickly learning the language, but also the new culture and some things came into conflict with their special Asian values. They needed somebody to help pull them together, to help revive their spiritual strength that had been faltering. Jimmy had to survive too. Nobody was paying him to go around and do that. He had to find a job. He found one that another translating. There were so many that needed his shepherding. So ASAP began to pay him a stipend for halftime ministry. Over a period of about two years, his church grew and grew in North Carolina. Would the conference see the need to hire him? And what about his countrywide vision with Seventh-day Adventist refugees scattered all over the USA, let alone many non-Adventists like Baptists, Buddhists, and others? In time, the Carolina Conference hired Jimmy half-time and the North American Division through Terry Saley and the Adventist Refugee and Immigrant Ministries Department filled out the rest of his salary. So the little boy, who almost died at three months old, the jungle wannabe soldier, became a soldier for God in America. There are now 45 Korean-led congregations meeting in the United States. His home congregation in North Carolina has grown to 182 members meeting in four places with members from five cities. This is a beautiful story showing how much God cares about refugees among us. It's an awesome story of how God can take a Jonah like Jimmy and turn him into a mighty worker. Do you and I care like this? What can we do? There are strangers all around us and they need one thing, a helpful friend. Will you determine to find one international person and become their friend in the next month? Think about it right now and decide if that's something you can do and then go do it. We can also open our churches to ethnic groups like that church in North Carolina. We can give money so the leaders have stipends or at least travel budgets. There is so much that we can do. We can even call our conference and tell them we're dedicated to this because we've seen the great need around us. I have written up a lot of the ideas and put them at reachtheworldnextdoor.com. I've even put together a kit that you can do with your church to get solidly involved in God's final mission. Besides that, you can give money to support this network of Korean Seventh-day Adventists at our website, asapministries.org. God noticed this great opportunity and raised up a jungle soldier. God wants to use us too. Let's respond to his call. Let's reach the world ASAP.